Hello everyone, my name is Hector Doomhammer, I'm your evil overlord and welcome to a game called Mad Games Tycoon. A game where you make games. Quite simple. I'm going to be starting a new game with Mr. Hector Doomhammer as me. The company name is going to be Doomhammer Entertainment. And first and foremost... I'm going to choose my company logo, which, funny enough, will be my own. Yes, you can add your own logo to uh, the game itself. Replace, it, uh, re replace one of the logos with one logo. Next up, the starting country. Each starting country will have a sales bonus of a particular uh, genre. And as you can see, the Netherlands isn't part of it. But my favorite genre, obviously, is real-time strategy. So I'm gonna go with Spain, because that has a sales bonus of real-time strategies. Now, besides the sales bonus, something else that happens uh, with your starting country, if you don't select USA or United Kingdom, you will get a free uh, language translation for your games in that particular language. So Spanish will be free. Male gender or female gender game settings. I'm going to leave it as is. And my special feature will be sprites. And my special genre, of course, will be RTS. Now I'm going to put one point in each of these. Oh, one point I say. And one point in skill. I'm going to go on the standard speed. Starting in 1980, uh, the later you start, the more features you will have unlocked. The earlier you start, the less features you will have. And then we'll be unlocking with time and such. So we'll do that, and the difficulty will be normal. And if the game doesn't crash on me, I can actually show you how this game works. Here we go. Welcome to Mad Games Tycoon. Initially, many functions are disabled, but with time, more and more features will be unlocked. Have fun! Right, this is what we're starting out with. Basically, just our home with a car in the garage. And here we can buy our dev kits, engines, uh, take game from market, but we can't do that yet. Project coordinator, publishing offers, copy protection licenses. We can't do anything with that just yet. So here we are, Hector Doomhammer. And these are the rules that we have. So currently we only have development and toilets. The local cop. So we'll do development a little... Uh, Five by three. There we go. This is the furniture. We'll do desks. And we'll do like one desk, two desk. Now, what I'm going to be doing is actually make another dev studio right next to it. Because I'm going to be trying to produce two games at the same time. Yoink, yoink. And then I will have a toilet room. Oh. Of 3x3. Three three. And toilets require a toilet. And then a hand dryer. A little watching for distraction for me. Excellent. And a sink. Right over there. Right. Where are we? Here we are. So I'll place you in here. Now I'm going to be hiring a couple of people. I want a programming person. For here. A graphics person for here. And a sound person for here. Alright. We have our staff. And we can now build a staff room, which I will not. Because as you can see, we're running a little low on money. Now I want to focus my attention up to here. We have 
a trend. Skill games and the topic is prison that are in trends. And the other one is the topic that is unpopular. Puzzle games as the uh, genre and cats as the topic are unpopular. This is the money that we have. This is the amount of fans we have. This is the quality of our office. This is our popularity or reputation. And these are the amount of features that we have unlocked. We're starting on January 1st, 1980. And we are going to develop our first game. Well, let's see what the topics are. Crocodiles, art and wrestling. It's a skill game. So we'll do crocodiles with... A skill game. Retail, we can only choose retail for now. The game size, varying from B to B plus, A, double A, triple A, but we only have A or a B at the moment. Engine, we don't have an engine yet, so we just have two features altogether. Now I have a little guide over here that I'm going to. Uh, gets really quick and it states the the target marketing and for skill games we want adults we can even select a subtopic wrestling alligator wrestling uh jeff er with Go dial hunter. Jeff Irwin Crocodile Hunter. Actually, let's do it like so. We can release our games at a maximum of four platforms, but currently we only have one. That is the personal computer. That can support up to triple A. And now this. I also have a guide for this. Let's see, we have skill games. Skill, skill, skill. There we go. So, gameplay, minus four. That means that it's focusing more on gameplay than graphics. Story versus game length, it needs to be a maximum of five game length. It needs a five plus for the functions and beginner friendly as well. And then plus five for the big casual gamer. We don't have any concepts yet because we didn't have any games done just yet. We don't have any fan letters because we don't have any games yet. And we don't have any uh, game reports because we don't have any games yet. Now this, the priority in what we are going to use. I also have a guide for that. And let's see, we have skill. Graphics are not important at all, so 10%. Sound is not important at all, so 10%. Technology, 30%. Gameplay, 50%. Now, I'm going to remove Spanish. And as you see, it doesn't change the price, the dev cost. But if I add Italian, it does. It actually increases. But now if I add Spanish again, it doesn't. So once, I, once again, Spanish is free. So we'll leave it at this. And these are the only two features that we have unlocked at the moment. Got the same disease as my daughter. Last that's so horrible at the moment. Dang it, that sucks, man. So this is the game that we will develop. And simultaneously, we will develop another game. That is also for adults. That is wrestling with crocodiles this rock go dial dundee crocodile dundee that's going to be a skill game as well without an engine for the pc and since we have everything properly set up here and here and there we don't have enough money so i will borrow fifty thousand 
Let's develop two games simultaneously. Now, I'm going to be switching mostly between speed 3, very fast, and passing. That's a bug, but we don't care. Jeff Irwin, Crocodile Hunter. Let's publish the game. We have gameplay, graphics, sounds, and technology with two bugs. And this is a skill game. In Infcons currently has a fan base for skill. And we're getting seven bucks out of it. So let's do that. Your first game was completed. You can now build the research area. There you can research new features, genres, and themes. And now we get a score. 81. Oh! 82%! With the genre in trend, we get the fun award because it's over 80%. Super! Your game has received great reviews. Maybe we should eventually develop a sequel. And now Crocodile Dundee. Let's publish that too. Same publisher. You've released your second game. You can now buy dev kits to develop games for other platforms. You've released your second game. To increase sales, you should develop games for multiple platforms. Two platform is now available. Now let's see how this one does. It's gonna be worse than the other one because I have different people there. But still, good graphics. Because we have a good graphic person there. The game is in trend and still 77%. So what we can do now is update the language packs for Jeff Irwin Crocodile Hunter. So let's just enable all of them. And as you can see, uh, the graphics, the, the gameplay is going to get a bonus of 3. The graphics will get a bonus of 2. Sound will get a bonus of 2. Technology will get a bonus of 2. And the bugs. Out of the two we have, this update will remove five bugs. So basically, after this update, the game will be bug free. Let's do that. Same with this. Crocodile Dundee. Enable all. Out of the three bugs, six bugs will be removed. Your games are selling well. To further increase sales, you might want to implement copy protection. And updating your games will actually just increase the sales and keep it going longer. You have enough money to buy licenses. Games with real licenses sell mostly better. Acquire license is now available. Many fans have written that they are very satisfied with uh, Jeff. And we've released... Ah! Perfect. And our publisher has released a... Uh, Marketing campaign for both of the games. Even better. So, let us... Oh, don't do that. But let us develop a language pack for Jeff. And we'll just do three languages for 15,000. And we'll do the same here as well. Crocodile D. French, German and Italian. We already have Spanish. There we go. And now we're getting new features and stuff for console research. Better yet, I might want to repay my debt. Because it wasn't that much to begin with. We have a new genre, RPG. And the language packs usually take a little longer, especially uh, when your people are low quality. Let's see, do we have any people that are good? Not really. Occasionally you'll, you'll find people with like a uh, game design of 80 plus. Those are the basic legendaries. You want to have them. And uh, that's that. And that's, let's do another update for you. 
And as you can see, since there are no more bugs in the game, the f bug fix update is removed. There. And we'll do the same for you. And in the meantime, I'm gonna build the research room. Oh, that's two. Dang it. Well, let's just do it like this. It's gonna look a little awkward here, but who cares? Gonna have some desks. One. Two. Okay. Two desks is all that we can afford. And after this update, I'm gonna research... Prison. Hey, Packy, how you doing, buddy? Right. The two of you go into research, and you go research me a topic. That is prison. Because prison is popular. There. And you two will just develop a patch for Jeff Irwin, Crocodile Hunter. There we go. Nice big sales boost. We'll do a small booth for Jeff Irwin. Because this is a games convention. And we're gonna get some fans. 461. Noise! And one more game update for Crocodile Dundee. There. And the two of you. We'll go in here, make me another game. Uh, person. Uh, labor. Prison labor. It's gonna be prison, because that's a very trendy uh, topic at the moment. It's gonna be a skill game, because it's still like that. We know that adults like skill games. And we can actually do something with licenses. Let's buy one. Alicia in Wonderland Jumpers? Or Jumpers? The Recruiter, Amazing Webman, Blue Nose, Harry Potter, and the uh, Order of the Whatever, Kung Fu Turtles, Great School Musical, Asian Showdown, and GLN Amahine. Nah, nothing interesting so far. So we'll do it without a license. There. But, now we can also develop something for a new console. And you want to look at the market share. 24.8% for the Qatari 2600? I'd say let's do that for $32,000. Which means that I can do now that, and we'll develop this game for two. And we know that everything is proper, but we can buy copy protection. There we go. Use that. Do we have any fan letters? Yes, Jeff Irwin, Crocodile hunt, uh, Hunter. Doing extremely well. And they are very satisfied with it. Splendid! Let's make this game. Jeff Irwin has sold extremely well. Congratulations. Prison labor. Sure, let's publish it. Infcoms still has that, so let's do that. Bam. And it's not going to do so very well either. Topic and trend, game, uh, genre in trend, but 75%. Okay. I guess it's time to get some stuff done with that. So, prison labor, do that. You guys also do one for prison labor. 
And now we have enough money to produce our own games. Production is now available. I actually dislike production. It causes a lot more headaches than it's worth it. Trust me. I will do another development update. All of that. And you guys do a language pack. Not a patch. A language pack. For all of these. But we're still making a nice profit out of it. And we've almost made a million off of Jeff Irwin Crocodile Hunter. 900,000. Let's see if it's worth it to actually get another update for that game. It's my secretly being Spanish all along. Well, the Spanish actually have a sales bonus for RTS games. And that's what... Okay, Crocodile Dundee is off the market, made us almost half a million dollars. One sell. Uh. Yes, done. Okay, so that's no longer worth it. Let us do one more update for present labor while we're at it. And they are very satisfied with that. Good. Right, I'm going to send you two into research. Because we have some features. And the two of you will do some contract work. Contract work is basically a way to earn some quick money. Just given the RTS bonus to Germany, Spanish are better for cooking games. Yep, I agree. Right, wow, look at that. Jeff Irwin Crocodile Hunter made us 906,000 bucks. Now let's see, the Game Awards for the first year. And... Prison Labor is the worst game of the year. We lose all our fans because we didn't even have uh, 2,500. That's a risk. So the contract work is done, so we'll do some more contract work. Yoink! You've researched your first feature, now you can develop your own engine! But we're gonna do more! So we make games you can easily cheese. Yeah. And do some more contract work while we're at it. Now we're actually gonna move into a bigger office after all of my features here are done. Including joystick driver, apparently. <laughs> okay, sprites. Do some more contract work while we're at it. Seventy, uh, fifty-seven percent still worst game, but how? Yeah, I know. Let's do another update for it. Prison labor. I mean, the genre, the genre was in trend, the topic is in trend, and still 57%. Eh? Eh? Let's see. 30, uh, 1300 up to... 1200. Okay, so updating this game doesn't work anymore. It's not worth it. Joystick drivers? Anything else that I want to research? Negative. So, let's move to a bigger office. The large garage. We'll get a refund of all the stuff that we used. Uh, 
<laughs> let's fuck it over. Yeah, it's popular. Actually, let's drink some iced tea. You've bought a bigger office. Since you have more space, you should build a trading room for your employees. Which is exactly what I'm going to be starting out with. Trading room. 5x3, 5x4. And trading room. Beats desks. Yoink, yoink. Yoink, yoink. And a blackboard, just because. Perfect. Now, I am going to be starting out with training my employees. All of them. We're going to start out with some game... No, wait. Council course. Training courses. Automatically repeat training. Until it's done. Yoink. I want to make better games. So I'm going to train my guys... to be better. That's one course done. The artists. We will do a small booth just to get a little bit more fans. For prison labor, maybe get a little bit more sales out of it than the 127. Yep. Right. So that course is now done. We've done all three of the courses. So let's do game design made easy. Let's just train my people in all of the stuff. And in the meantime, I will develop a single development studio. But, I'm gonna do something else. We're actually going to be placing objects automatically. And this is where this comes in. This is the quality of the uh, office that you're gonna be building. This is the highest, this is the lowest. So, let us just do 5x5 five 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 with a door right here. Two desks. Still very, very luxurious, I'd say. So maybe if I move this to, oh, I'll sell this. There, we still made seven hundred and forty thousand bucks on prison labor, despite the fact that it was such a horrible game. I'll sell these two, and I'm going to place in two more desks. One more desk I can fit in. One more. Two more. Perfect. Very cramped, but it'll work. And I'll do some research while we're at it. Five by five. Two desks, sure. And we will do toilets in the back. Three by three. We'll do a head office, which you need. Of three by three. And we'll leave it at that for now. Right, we have a new era where mathematics with economic simulator is popular, but skill with aliens is unpopular. So if you wanted to produce a game that is popular, we're gonna need mathematics with alien, with a economic simulator. So I think that I will hire two more staff. Oh, we have a legendary person. David Paris, look at that programming and design. You.